Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Moronic History Podcast. Uh, I'm Severon42. And I'm the co-host, Rubbly Red. I am very tired. I am, too. Uh, we're both very tired, but we decided that we're going to get this recorded. But because... we're going to do it anyway. We're going to get this recorded because I need to start writing the next episode because uh, we already delayed because... I'm going to put a clip of what I sounded like last time we were going to record, because I sounded like the deaf. Hey, I'm just recording this in case the podcast gets delayed by a week to explain, because right now I sound like this. It's not, I'm not sick or anything. I just have um, seasonal allergies that are kicking my butt right now. So I'm kind of losing my voice. Uh, me and Rumbly plan on recording it uh, tomorrow for me. But we don't know if that will work. So if it gets delayed by a week, I'll obviously post this, and so you'll know why. But I just kind of wanted to explain this, because we're not trying to be inconsistent with the upload. It's just, I sound like this, and my voice might give out before. It'll probably give out at some point, so, yeah. Dang. Uh, okay, so... We're not. We're gonna. We're talking about the one time the Confederates built a submarine. But first, we're gonna talk about the stupid crap that I spend my money on. Um. Yeah. So I bought the the new Lego ATTE Walker, and it's sitting right next to me as I'm recording this, and I love it. It's great. Yeah. Uh... Let's just say Severon is not wise with his money. No. But, oh well. You, this is this is what will happen if I ever get monetized, which you know, hopefully, right? If you, yes. you guys should subscribe so I can get monetized. Um, if I ever get monetized, I will be spending all of the money I make from this on stuff like this. None of it. Yeah, will be, so none of it will be saved. Basically, YouTube. What we're saying is, don't monetize him. Uh, no, please, please do. I have so many Legos I want to buy. Like, so many. Don't. Oh, it's, no, it's not going to be worth it. Oh, it, oh, it'll be worth it. I I will literally... I will personally make a 1% of Legos income per year. <laughs> but anyways, let's, let's, let's talk. I will pay their salaries. So first of all, uh, we, we did it. We went two episodes without talking about the Second World War. Woo. Until... Well, well, we're not talking about something that happened. We're just talking about how we're not talking about World War II. We're not exactly. So therefore, it's a loophole. It's a loophole. So a yeah, loophole. Uh, you can thank me very much. I think. Uh, ooh, the next one also won't be World War II, so we'll go three. Oh, also, yeah, Dang. Rumbly, you want to tell them about your um your stupidness and what what and why we're not recording the next one that you were gonna write. What? You were going to write the next one. Do you want to tell them why you're not? I'm sorry. I'm I'm lost. Remember, you were going to write a the um alternate history I was, episode. I was. I was. I don't remember the reason on why I'm not. I don't either. Writing the so next one. Uh, yeah. Yeah, wrong. no. Uh I'm not writing the next one. But I will write an alternative history. After, we're going to talk about it at the end of the episode because I want to bring it up, but after in a very important thing that I have scheduled for myself. Yeah, so uh, until then, it'll just be like a random episode. You you won't know what's going to happen until it happens. Until then, exactly. you get me writing the episodes, which I know you all love and definitely don't hate yourselves for watching those. They definitely do. Yeah. Okay, Um. let's do this. So... I want to get this very clear because I don't want anybody to be thinking that I'm tricking them or that I'm lying to them. So I'm going to get my opinions on this very clear. Not opinion, it's fact. Um, the American Civil War, where 600,000 Americans died on both sides, was caused by slavery. Nothing else. Like, there were other precipitating no. factors, but slavery was the main one. Um, uh, L skill issue, BTF your mom. Burning Sherman all the way to the sea, he should have burnt down more than just Atlanta. Uh, actually, I, there. That's that's what I feel. There are my opinions. That's how you feel? Yep. He attack. He attack. He attack. It's. 
I have no sympathy for Confederates or for uh, yeah, no, I have no sympathy. No. Uh, they were slavers. Uh, I'm not saying that the Union was perfect. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that uh, slavery, it's pretty cringe. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like, I'm gone. <laughs> rumbly, rumbly doesn't eat. Uh, he, yeah, okay. Uh, this is why, this is why we usually wait until we don't do stuff during the day before we record, but we are very bad at managing our time. Yeah. So if you guys feel the need to uh, tell me that the war, war of Northern Aggression happened, uh, you can uh, suck the burning of Atlanta. I don't care. Moving on. Let's do the history. Right? Oh, boy. So we got to talk about the history of the Confederacy. So starting, Yay. we're not going to talk about the entire history of the United States okay, because... thank God. Yeah, actually, starting in like uh, I six... knew where the I knew I knew where this sounded like it was going, and I was about to yeah, I was about to shoot you through this computer screen. Starting in 1492, when Columbus sailed the ocean blue. And then, nope, I'll, no, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm getting it ready. He's got he's okay. out now. Yeah, actually, Rumbling and I are in the same room, and he's got a Glock 19 to the back of my skull. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. right now, right now, right now. Okay, you better not. I swear to God. So we're gonna start at the Mexican-American War because that's like closer. So with the Treaty of okay, I'm sorry, I'm a little German boy. I speak a little bit of German. Um, not yeah, I don't speak uh, any Spanish. It's called mm -hmm. Guadalupe Hidalgo. That's my bet. That, Guadalupe Hidalgo. You yeah. said it right. Yes. Oh, I feel good about myself. You said it right. Good job. All right. I'm so the main so the main thing that the US gained from the Mexican American War was the states of uh the free state of Texas, California, Nevada, Utah, Arizona, and parts of Colorado and New Mexico. So lots of re lots of territory. Um part of the reason that Texas declared its independence from Mexico was that it Mexico had actually outlawed slavery, but Texas was very slavery dependent. So your Texas independence also has slavery it's on its hands. So uh, yeah, suck it, Texans. That's how I, that's how I feel about you, Texas. That's why I'm looking at you. Not even the biggest state in the union. Alaska has you beat like by a mile. It's not even close. Everything's bigger in Texas. No, everything's second biggest in yeah. Texas. Not the biggest economy, not the biggest population, not the biggest state. It's just big. Wait, what is the biggest state by population? Is it California? Or is it New York? I have... It's California. Yeah, that sounds right. I know this because they have more population than Canada. <laughs> That's, yeah, I'm, I'm not even kidding. Look this up. Yeah, because what? Canada only has like 33 million or something? Future Sevron, who's editing this right now. Flash it on the screen. Yeah. Feel the difference. I believe in you. Okay. So. Okay. One I of hope the... you're doing great. So Texas was it? I, he is not. Okay. Texas was admitted into the Union as a slave state, and this was a very big deal because at the time the biggest debate in the United States was the difference between slave and free states. Um, the reason the number of free and non-free states mattered was that if one faction got more votes than the other in the Senate, they could outlaw slavery entirely or make it legal forever. That's a problem. Yes, of course. So this is why, like, uh, the Missouri Compromise, the Mason-Dixon, not the Mason-Dixon line, the uh, 36 parallel, that kind of stuff. That's why that all happened. Um, so in the 1860 election, uh, a moderately anti-slavery Republican named uh, Abraham Lincoln basically sweeps the election, even though he wasn't even on the bracket, not the bracket, ballot in most of the southern states, he still won, you can see there, 180 votes to 72. It was a lot. Yeah, I mean, we don't even question how much of a, like, a, you know. Yeah, it was pretty landslide election. Pretty, pretty landsided is what we're trying to get at here. Who was, what are the votes in those, those 39 votes? Who, who was that? I don't. How am I supposed to know that? Editing Severon. Uh, look that up, please. I have um, to put it on the screen. 
So then, obviously, we all kind of know the, the accepted start of the Civil War was the Confederates firing on Fort Sumter. So uh, there's your War of Northern Aggression, you traitors. So we're not going to get into what happened in the actual Civil War because that's you can just go watch Oversimplified. We're not going to explain that to you. Yeah, we're not. No, you don't, you, no. Actually, link it down below. Uh, I will the do that. Video is amazing. I will do that. It, the video is very, amazing. Go watch good. it. But I'm guessing since you're watching a small YouTube channel that's talking about a Confederate submarine, you know what happened in the Civil War. But if you don't, well, I I don't know why you're here. Well, then you should leave. And don't go don't, watch. No, all this no, 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 don't don't leave. Don't leave. I need the watch time, please. Subs okay, stay for now. Uh, please subscribe. Then go watch. Please subscribe. I do post more than once a month, usually. Hey, just butting in here for a quick second. I know this is probably annoying, but let me just do my spiel quick. Uh, if you're enjoying the content so far, I highly recommend that you hit the subscribe button. Me and Rumbly put a lot of effort into these, and we really enjoy when you guys show support for them. So if you could do that, that would mean the world to us, and there will be more Moronic History episodes coming out in the near future. So just keep that in mind, and with that, I hand you back over to the podcast. <laughs> so we, we need to talk about navies. We need to talk about boats. We've talked about boats in the past, but these are not German boats. So what do you know about the Anaconda Plan, Rumbling? The who and the what now? The Anaconda Plan. No. You Okay. So the Anaconda Plan was basically the Union's way of snuffing out con the Confederates' export of goods. So the Confederacy exported a lot of cotton to major European powers, and this is how they were kind of leverage uh, Great Britain and France into the war. So the Union decided to cut that off, so basically they couldn't leverage those two into the war. They did this by blockading both ports and just sinking any Confederate vessel ever, right? Um, this also cut them off from imports of supplies and arms. This was majorly important. Um, they also shelled the mainland, because that's what you do with guns. So, yeah. the main thing that the Confederacy wanted to do was make sure to keep its ports open, and also just sink as many U Union merchant vessels as possible. The Confederacy really didn't think, at least towards the end of the war, that they could win but they thought they could make it costly enough where the Union would just sign a peace treaty, which, at certain parts of the war, was not a bad idea. I mean, yeah. If you remember the, like, 18, is it 64 draft riots in New York? It, it, the war was unpopular up until um, Lee's defeat at Antietam, I think. No, it was Gettysburg. It was Gettysburg. Was it Gettysburg? Um, shoot. I think it was Gettys it was Gettysburg or Antietam. I can't remember which. Mm. I think it was Gettysburg. I don't know. It's been a long time. I don't remember. It's been a long time. Flash it on the screen. I should watch the oversimplified video while I'm editing. Um, so the... There was a lot of blockade running, which is, in, which is just where you try to get through the blockade to get supplies and sell goods. And... Basically, the Union's just trying to make sure that the that the UK and France don't join in on the war. Because that would be painful. Very. So, very, very painful. We need to do a comparison. Look at these two men. Now, what, do you, what is your immediate thought about these two men right here? What do you think about the one on the left? He... I don't like the beard. You don't like the be oh that's oh, that's disappointing. What about the guy on the right? Oh, oh sorry, I thought sorry, I missed my directions. On the guy on the right, I don't like the beard. The guy on the left. Okay, okay, okay. So, on the left is U.S. Secretary of Navy Gideon Wells, and that's a man right there. That's what that's who I want in charge of my navy. And the guy on the right, oh, so Gideon Wells also expanded the U.S. Navy tenfold, and then on the right was Stephen Mallory, who was the Secretary of the Navy for the CSA, and He's from Florida, if that says anything. God, oh, like why would you grow that beard? You can still see his chin. I, I don't. I mean, like, it's very poor design uh, yeah. by his part. This is what slavery does to you guys. This, this is what slavery does.
man. And, Makes... and you, you get a weird beard. Yeah, you get the you got the Chad unionist who's like, I'm gonna free some slaves, and the guy on the right is just like, mm, I don't want my slavery be. Yeah. I would say sorry for being mean, but um, I don't care because th if there's one thing I hate, it's people who think the Confederacy was right because they weren't. And you just simply weren't. And if you think that, you should stop now. Yeah, no, I, I have no qualms of saying, yeah, if you think that the Confederacy was right in the Civil War, you can just stop watching my channel. Uh, you can comment down below and say why I'm wrong, and I will probably respond to you because just to call you dumb, but uh, yeah. Yeah. I have no respect for people who are slavers, basically. Okay. Let's talk about boats. You want to talk about boats? Yeah, let's talk. Let's talk about boats. You sound very enthusiastic. I, I, I mean, I am. What can so, I say? I'm an enthusiastic man. The types of ships. I am not. That was an. That was a lie. I know. You're tired. I get it. You're a sleepy boy. Blech. You'll get to talk about science in a bit. Oh, I don't even know what you're talking actually, about. Actually, no. Actually. I'm actually not. He's not talking about science. We're doing conspiracies. Yay! Okay, so during the start of the war, most of the ships on both sides were wooden sloops of war. Um, these were the most common types of ships for basically 300, more than 300 years at this point. They were cannons, wooden ships, basically Pirates of the Caribbean. Basically. But what's one problem with wood? Fire. Exactly! So, incendiary... I was guessing. Incendiary shells were something that were invented around this time. And, well, wood burns really easily, so... Huh, weird. Yeah, it, weird. So, there were many... There were, like, ideas about what should we do to counteract this. But, so, what doesn't burn? What's one material that doesn't burn? No. Wait, no, that can burn. What? What can burn? Metal can burn at, like, a high enough temperature, so I'm going to retract my statement. But you're on the right track. Iron I am. Ironclads. Ironclads are steam-powered, which is very cool, that had either iron or steel armor, and fire doesn't burn hot enough to melt either. It can singe it, but not really. It's fine. Uh, the yeah. first ironclad was in 1862. Well, the first battle of ironclads was at the Battle of Hampton First Roads. official battle. Yeah, of ironclads was between the USS Monitor and the CSS Virginia. I don't, I don't think either of them got sunk because I didn't write, huh. I didn't write it down in my notes. I bet they're, I, I bet they're decommissioned, but. Oh, they definitely got scrapped at the uh, end oh, of no, the they, war. Oh no, they probably, they probably did. Uh, not many. Either that, or they got, or they kept, or, they kept it around until like the first world war and then they scrapped them yeah. and made different better yeah it's one disappointing thing about a lot of wars is that you don't because at the time it's like oh why are we going to keep this useless piece of equipment well because i always think we should preserve at least a couple of each because it's, it's cool to have that kind of stuff but you know history happens and you got to take what and you the end Hey, yep. Jeez, I don't you, know I was going with that. Good you Lord. are a sleepy boy. Uh, I'll for, make it, don't worry. For context, it's 8 o'clock where, we, where we're at. Well, yeah, I... <laughs> Interesting. Fine, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be alive, don't worry. So let's talk about why the Confederacy lost. Um, most mm, of the things... Weird. So I wonder why. Oh, the main the main thing we're going to talk about here is why does the Confederacy come up with such kooky things? Um, the Confederacy had a lack of material due to the fact that they had an agricultural economy based around well slavery. They didn't have a bunch of industry while the Union did. You can you can see in the bottom that graph right there that says how many miles of rail. Is that in millions? No, that's just not. There's miles of rail, and the U S U S had two times plus more rail. And this meant that they yeah. could move resources more efficiently. And also the Confederacy just kind of wasted their resources. Most of this was due to like Lee 
and the mentality of the Confederacy, mostly just trying to throw, trying to win these big set piece battles where they just threw away a lot of men. The Union does have a lot more casualties, but that's mostly due to um, the Overland Campaign, where they were on yeah. offensive against deeply entrenched positions. But like another thing, I want to add about the railways of the Confederacy, they only had two major ones. Yeah, one that ran through uh, Savannah, I believe. Uh, and Savannah, another oh, one Georgia, through yeah. at and another one that ran through Atlanta. Yeah, and as you those know, those two only. As you know, Burn Sherman kind of burned land to the ground. That was one of the main. And reasons. then he kind of just swept through, burned them down as he went, freeing, freeing slaves, adding them to his militia, beating some at. Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, William Tecumseh Sherman, hero of the Union. So, um, that is, this is the main reason why the Confederacy had to resort to really, like, harebrained ideas. So, what, what kind of harebrained solution did they come up with? So, why a submarine? Why did they pick a submarine? Why am I, what am I looking at? Uh, you are looking at a Revolutionary War submarine. So, the first, so submarines <laughs> and... Di- revolutionary. Revolutionary? Yeah. Yep. Also, what's that little probe doing right under that man's uh, anal area? <laughs> what's that for? Uh, I assume it's just like, uh, oh, that's that's for the rudder. That's how he moves it, I think. I'm how not... is he supposed to like reach around? Honestly, I'm not sure. This these drawings are not great. That's the only thing I had. So this is called the turtle. It was you. It was built. For the Revolutionary War. I'm trying to like, figure out how this thing works. You, you do that. I'll explain. I, 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 can see, I can see like the, the pump there obviously helps him move. He's mm-hmm. got something there that's like... Oh, no. To move, he pedaled. He pedaled it. Yeah, that's what I mean. Right around the pump area, there's like a... I see like a pedal. Yep. So this was built for the, the Revolutionary War for a guy in a three-piece suit, by the way. He's in a suit. To take, oh my God, to do a New York Harbor because the British were blockading New York Harbor and they were gonna just pedal this thing under. And you see that kind of, you see that screw thing, um, yeah. on the top of the thing. Yeah, that he was gonna screw into the bottom of the boat and attach. I think it was he was either gonna use gunpowder or fire or just let the boat sink from the hole. That was the plan. That's the dumbest thing I've heard. Yeah. So you want to know what happened to it? Uh, it no. It sunk in the harbor. That that's what I thought. Uh, the builder claimed he got it in the water, and it just kind of. Bloop. I think it was getting sank. towed, and it was like bad weather or something. I'm not. Yeah, who cares? Uh, the builder claims, some excuses. Yeah, excuses. Uh, the builder. Cl- well, I mean, it did its job. It went underwater. Just never came back up. Yeah, it's it's it's. it's, it's it, uh, that's a 50- it's just it's just doing a really good job of staying underwater. Let's yeah, just say yeah. That. Uh, the builder claims that he recovered it, but you know, uh, where's the proof? Claims. Yeah, claims being the uh, the big sen- uh, part of that sentence. So yes, we are actually talking. This is not our. This is not the sub that we're going to be talking about, but it is important. This is called the Pioneer. It was. This is the first edition of the CSS Hunley. This was uh, built by the same guy, and it was the okay. first test. It was built in New Orleans. New Orleans? I don't know. How do you pronounce it? New Orleans. New Orleans? Okay, I'll say New Orleans. Oh, or New Orleans, uh, as I've heard it said. Um, it, there's so many different pronunciations. I'm just... I'm... I'm, yeah, it's, it's really dumb. It's in the it, South. It's... I don't care. Don't care. Don't care less. The main thing that... This one brings to the table is that it had the first implementation of where you would take the sub under a ship, you'd affix explosives to the bottom, and then get out of there and watch the ship blow up. Uh, this one was actually scuttled due to the fact that it was built in New Orleans, and New Orleans was about to be captured by the Union Army, and obviously you don't want this to fall into um, uh, the hands of the people, right? Obviously. Because otherwise, uh, otherwise, you know, the, the, the union is like, damn. Just boom. Just pow. Just. Whoa, 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 whoa. Cat. Where? Did I not put the. 
Oh no. We'll be right back after this. No, I got it. No, this is this is correct. Oh. I'm just I'm just stupid. Okay. okay, so the second failed Confederate submarine along the same lines as the Pioneer was the American Diver. Um it was basically the same. It was lost at sea during transport from New Orleans, so you know, things happen. Uh yeah, okay, no, I'm in the right spot. I'm, I'm smart. So. Stefan, Stefan, um, can we pause? Okay, uh, all right, we're back. Yeah, we're back. So I I misplaced my slides because I'm very smart. Uh, oh, we're, this is the H.L. Huntley. This is not the American Diver. Uh, it was actually the first sub to get any action, and this is the one we're actually here to discuss. The inventor, this guy. It only took us 14 slides. Of course, and however many minutes. Horace Lawson Hunley. He studied law in Louisiana, but when a bounty was set out by the Confederate government where if you sank a Union ship, you would get, you would, they would pay you 50% of whatever that ship was worth. Oh. So he was like, damn, I'm going to build a submarine, and I'm going to do this. So after failing with the first two, the uh, aforementioned Amer American Diver and the Pioneer, he and James McClint McClintock? began construction on the Hunley in 1863. So, the... Oh, sorry. I should let you talk. Let me talk? What? I, I, I don't know if you want to say anything. I sometimes get no, on No, not really. I I had nothing to comment about. I sometimes get on a roll, and I forget that this is not just me talking into a camera for however long. Ah, uh, you're good. Okay. So, the submarine's plans have been lost over the years because, well, I mean... Probably just piece of probably just like it was what eighteen sixty sixty three three I don't know eighteen sixty something. Uh, we do know a couple of things about how it was built, but I'm not going to spoil that because we're going to talk about it later. It was described as sleek and modern, so eighteen sixty three. So eighteen sixty three. It was modern. built. It was built in Mobile, Alabama. It was about forty feet long. God, I'm dying. Okay, with a crew of eight. Uh, with a crew of eight, that's, one of them steered. That's, that's not a very big submarine. No. Um, like when you think about that, that's like a school bus. Yeah, I think a school bus is 36 feet. Yeah, it's not very big. Somewhere around there. It's not, not very, very big, big and it's not... very cramped. Um, huh. So how do you think this thing moved? Because submarines recently have been nuclear, and before that was diesel. But none of that things really existed. So how did this one move? Pedals? No, you have eight. You have eight dudes cranking hog, move like spinning a little thing in the middle of a ship, where you just hope to God they. Why in the mid? You can see that I diagram. Don't know why. I, 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 I don't even want to know. No, you you don't. It's. <laughs> I I'm I, I don't even want to know. You I... have you have eight dudes getting the best arm work out of their lives. God, talking. About, okay, if if you haven't seen. Uh, oversimplified first Punic War videos. Do it after this, yep. but it 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 it's it's better than those sexy car <laughs> Carginian roars. Yeah, except like ex except these guys were slavers, so they're like work exactly. well. I guess Carth right, they're all slavers. The, the, they uh, go. It was, dude. It was ancient times. Okay, of, okay. These course. guys are kind of worse because they actively fought for slavery while those guys were mm, fighting for they, slavery. They, they just didn't care. They were like, damn, I yeah, own we, slaves. We, we enslave people. We own, we own slaves. Like, it, it's the norm. Yeah. Um, and, we, and they might even chop our pets in half. Man, they might. That's I, barbaric. It was normal for the time. It's like, like, no, it's actually pretty normal for the time. We okay. do the same. So, All right, anyway, stop talking about oversimplified. Please go watch that video after after, after this. this. You subscribe. Otherwise, otherwise, I'm gonna come out of your closet and I'm not gonna stop screaming at you until you sit through the end. Okay, cool. All right. So this thing got a whopping 3.5 horsepower. Uh, in comparison, I think the average car gets a thousand. No, not a thousand. I'm sorry. I'm stupid. I don't remember. Dude, that'd be the best car in the world. What are you talking about? I am not here to talk about cars. Uh, disregard. Okay, what is the... I'm looking it up now. Ah, uh, the, the podcast that does its research right. on the air. Uh, well, it's not like we prepared for this. Nope. So what is the average horsepower of a car? It's anywhere from 180 to 200. Okay, so there you go. 
So each end of the sub had ballast tanks. These were basically just so it didn't flip over. Um, and it had pumps in the ballast tanks to empty them or fill okay. them, depending on well, how. Like, that's, any, that's anywhere from 51 to 57 times more horsepower. Okay. Um, the ball ballast tanks are basically made so you can not flip over, and the pumps were just there so they could empty it or fill it, depending on how how they got to go. Um, on the underside how, of the how how down? Yeah, how down? Um, they had iron weights on the under on the underside to keep it submerged, but in the case of an emergency, they could be unscrewed so the sub would surface fast. The main thing that with these sub is that you don't have to worry about pressure sickness because they're not they're never going deep enough for that to matter. Um, it had two. Yes, that's the one bright side. Yeah, it had two watertight hatches in the front and the back for the crew to get out and get in, and they had to be made bigger so people could actually you know fit in. Um, well, it yeah, had... it's only a like forty foot submarine. Yeah. I would hope people could fit in it. Yeah. Um, the it had two conning towers, which are just basically the lookout towers where the people can get up and look. And it could submerge for two hours before it ran out of oxygen. Mm -hmm. Which is actually pretty long. I didn't think it would last that long. I didn't think it would last that long either. All right. Considering it was built by, like, two dudes. Alright. So in June of 1863... Oh my god. Oh yeah, I forgot you're actively watching The Flash at the moment. Yeah, I'm actively rewatching it. I that this was I More made this like later. I made this like a week ago. Um, the in June of eighteen sixty three, the Hunley was tested and it sank a coal flatboat under the supervision of the Confederate admiral. I don't I didn't put his name. Uh, with this successful test, they shipped the sub by train to Charleston, South Carolina, but it was seized by the Confederate government and pressed into service under the flag of the traitor states. So now it's not privately owned; it's Confederate Army. Okay. Confederate Army, by the way, not Navy. Not Navy, the Army, yep. because they didn't have a Navy. They had a Navy. I don't know why it got in the Army. What? They're dumb, that's why. Yeah. Um, it was never fully named a CSS, which is Confederate uh, Confederate ships, but I call it CSS because it basically was. And Basically. The inventor still had hands in its operations, so it wasn't, like, against as well. So let's talk about the first yeah. test dive under the Confederate government. Um, volunteering to pilot the sub, Navy Lieutenant John Payne of another CSS ship and the crew, they were all volunteers. This was a volunteer job. On the 29th of August, 1863, the crew was getting ready for a test dive. But then, during movement on the surface of the water, Lieutenant Payne stepped on the lever that controlled the diving surfaces, basically what caused it to go down, of the sub, and it caused the sub to dive with one of its hatches still open. Out of the eight, Lieutenant Payne and two others, not named, made it out, but five of the crew drowned, being Michael Kane, Nicholas Davis, Frank Doyle, John Kelly, and Absalom Williams. I have one question. Yep. Why is Grant Gustin on this slide, the oh. actor of The Flash? I have no idea. Well, that's what he's known for, but he's got other TV shows and it, movies, too. Uh, for the meme. That's the only reason. Yeah, I can for think. the meme. But it's just it. Okay. So the Confederate submarine sank itself, killing five of its crew. Oh. That's it. Podcast is over. So right no, no, you poor unfortunate soul. Um, after this, oh the submarine was raised from the depths and pressed back into service. Just let it die. They they just fished it out of the drink. Let, Moving on, round just, two. Just oh my god. After orders came down from General PT Bor. P.T. Beauregard, they were going to do some mock attacks on the wonderful day, on the day of eight, uh, the 15th of October, 1863. The Hundley failed to surface, and it killed all eight of its crew, these being Thomas S. Parks, Henry Beard, R., uh, uh, John Marshall, Charles McHugh, J Joseph Patterson, and Charles L. Sprague. Uh, I wonder why it sank for a second time. So... Now the I can only as to ponder a, a, why. Building, building a submarine in 1863 was a stupid idea. Exactly. Um, so now the observant among you might have realized that I only said seven names. Well, that's because the eighth member of the crew was the literal inventor of it, Horace Hunley. 
died to his own creation. Cool. Literally. We love so, that. let's count the tally. The Hunley has killed exactly zero Union soldiers, and it has killed 13 Confederates, including the inventor. And then, the Confederacy... I think it's a Union... I think it knew that the Union was going to win. The Union spy. They, the, 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 the submarine itself is a Union. So then the Confederacy brings it back up from the depths for another time. Oh my god, round three, fight, so, finish him. Let's stop talking about it sinking. Let's talk about how this thing would even work against other ships, because it had a plan. The first idea was to have an explosive placed at the end of a rope, and it would just go under a ship and drag the rope into a, a vessel. It was, it, this was gotten rid of because it was just stupid and dangerous. Yeah, uh, we don't need it sinking for a third time, which I assume it did. We'll see. Um, the main way people believe that it was uh, maintenance to damage ships was by a spar torpedo. Basically, at the end of a long stick, the um, it would just run into a thing and explode. It's just a oh bomb at the end of a pole. Well, when you put it like that. Um, it was either that when it hit, or there was a copper wire inside that would. It's weird. It's it it's Confederate. It's it's Confederate. So that's all you need to know. On the seventeenth of February, eighteen sixty four, a United States sloop of war was on the entrance of the Charleston Harbor, where the Hunley was stationed. Trying to break the blockade, a group of eight volunteers took the Hunley out and used a spar torpedo to sink the USS Housatonic. Out of the hundred and fifty crew aboard the Housatonic, five of them were killed, men, meaning that the Hunley now had a 13 to 5 kill ratio. Not very good. No, not at all. So what happened to the Hunley? The Hunley didn't return to base, and one person said that they had received a signal from the Hunley that it was moving around about an hour after the sinking of the Housatonic, but that was never proven. A theory went that it was struck by a U.S. ship going to save the crew of the Housatonic, but nobody knew for a while. In the 60s or 70s, it, the, wreck was, the wreck was located. Not very far from the wreck of the Housatonic. So, I assume it just failed the surface for a third time. We'll see. The Hunley was under a lot of sill, and this kind of preserved it. It preserved it from the harmful effects of the salt in the ocean. And on the 8th of August, 2000, the Hunley was raised from the depths of the ocean for the third time. Or the third time. Yep. Uh, a lot of care was taken to preserving it. It was taken out of the water and into a uh, sodium hydroxide bath, so the rust wouldn't completely consume the ship. Uh, right now, it's still under restoration, and it takes a lot of effort, too. I don't mind them restoring it, only if it's not used as a monument to the confederacy and more as a neat little history fact i hope it's a history fact if it's used Which, knowing the united states government it's probably going to be a monument it's so actually let's be honest. it's actually under i think private care at the moment and probably by some weird confederate sympathizers <laughs> it's, just, it's just a gang of them if it's being you if it's going to be used as a monument to the confederacy and why it was good i sink it again yeah, no, I, I I will sink it personally. I, the fourth time. The fourth time and the final time. So you may notice something. The ship is in perfect condition. Other than the rust, it's in perfect condition. It's not split in half. It doesn't have any major structural damage, and it's completely fine. What happened to the crew? Well, oh, um, boy. a scientist got a look at it, and it noticed that the sub itself had no structural damage, and all of the crew had no skeletal damage, like at all. Huh. So a study was done by Duke, a pretty prestigious university here in the States, and it used a scale model to determine that when the Hunley rammed into the Housatonic using its spar torpedo, it made an explosion that created a pressure pocket that shot back into the, the sub, basically melting like so when water ex expands oh uh, yeah 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 it creates pressure I and can... it shoots it back so your skeleton is fine but like the pockets of air in your lungs brain and other organs 
basically get they turned into like, soup. Yeah, exactly. They just like e they will either implode or soup. Uh, I have a video that I say in the notes to add. I might do that. I'm not sure. So, so yeah, I add something. Oh, this ahead. is why when a grenade goes off, you don't jump in the water. This is why they tell you to lay as flat as possible. Yes. So the pressure killed the don't crew. Don't in the water because your lungs will explode. Yeah. The pressure basically killed the crew instantly, meaning that the the CSS Hunley has a twenty-one to five kill ratio. Um, I, I'm going to mention the crew here only because I, for the historical record, uh, these were. Mm -hmm. And to make fun of them because they were all fighting for slavery, so I don't. I literally just wanted meme on them. Uh, George yes. Dixon, Frank Collins, Joseph F. Ridgeway, James A. Wicks, Arnold Becker, Corporal Johann Frederick Carlson, and C. Lumpkin and August Augustus Miller. Uh, hey, Mister Lumpkin, can you? Um, that's a good name. That's a good name. That's not. No, it's it's a very funny name though. So. Uh, it's a very funny. Um, so I thank you for the funny name. So, uh, uh, Confederacy bad, slaves, slavers died, wonderful day for the Union, uh, the Union's greatest soldier, C uh, the USS Hunley. Yep. The greatest soldier, and we, and we stand to salute him. We, we stand to salute the, C the USS her. Hunley. Her, him. Her? I, it's, a, it's, a, it's a ship, so I'd say her. It's a her. Okay. I don't know if I'm going to have to uh, white out the swastika. I think it should be fine. But I'll see if I can flag for you it. You might want to. Yeah, I might. The Confederate the Confederate flag is never a flag for that kind of stuff, but the swastika might be. But it, I do. I'd love that meme too much. I have to include it. That's fair. But white out the swastika because you're gonna need to do that. Yep. And I love um the uh oh what was that show called Invincible? I love the Invincible meme. I like Invincible. It's a good show. Oh my god, that is such a good show. We actually didn't we watch that together? We did. We watched all of it together. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. God, I recommend it. Oh, a very good show. Um, I very definitely show. paid for the show and didn't. Uh, yeah, no. Acquire it by no, illegal no, means. No, he paid. No, he, he paid. He paid. I saw. Yeah, I saw yep, 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 yep. <clears throat> anyway, so in conclusion, Union good, Confederacy bad. Don't build a submarine in 1863. Thank you. And good night, Tri-State Area. Tri-State Area. Because uh, that's where we are right now. Yeah, we're actually, yeah, I'm actually in uh, Philadelphia at the moment. Uh, so uh, uh, I turn it over to my co-host, Rumbly, for his thing. So I, I renamed it. It's conspiracy hour now. Because it usually takes because a damn hour. Because it might take an hour. Okay. All right. Flip Let's it. move on. All right. Yep. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, if I had monetization, it would be gone. God damn it. Listen. Listen. Okay. You're lucky. You're lucky I'm not this monetized. This one is amazing. And I, and I want it. it. It's basically clipped. a conspiracy clipped. on. Clipped. Clipped. You got clipped. 9-11 was amazing. Clipped. Clipped. No, 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 no. Not that the event was amazing. The event was horrible. <laughs> it's just the conspiracy theory behind it is amazing. Okay, okay. I'll let you. I'll let you talk. Go ahead. And and no, it's it's about. It's not about like oh it didn't happen or uh did 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 did. No, yeah, it's like it's like Bush it, Bush it did 11 It goes into the science behind how. Some things just don't add up. All right, go ahead. Oh, uh, so, disclaimer before we start. Uh, the Moronic disclaimer. History Podcast does not in any way endorse or believe any of the conspiracy featured on the Conspiracy Hour. If we change our minds about this, we will let you know, but assume that we do not believe in them. I want to tell you right now, what? I kind of believe this one. Ooh, you better, you better give me some honest. damn Besides, good the numbers, the numbers don't add up. You better that's give me some good information. I do. I got a lot. I got notes. All right, let's hear them. Okay, so the evidence is overwhelming that the terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001, God, rest rest the twin tower souls and everybody that died. Yeah, it's like uh, three thousand. Salute to the men that died. Three thousand. Salute people? to the men that died. Uh, 
We thank you for your service. Anyway, uh, by men, he means like uh, the uh, firefighters and stuff. He doesn't. Firefighters he, and he also, police officers. He's also saluting the women. He just he says he's just saying men like firefighters. And men stuff. and women. It's just it's just a standard thing you say, but it's yep. whatever. So we're indeed we're indeed the result of a conspiracy, a conspiracy of Osama bin Laden and the crew of mostly Saudi hijackers. Right. That's just the title. That's we're getting into it. That's true. So this is too simple for some, though. Conspiracy theorists have a variety of much more complex explanations for what happened at the World Trade Center and Pentagon that day, often involving insider knowledge by President George Bush, Vice President Dick Cheney, I think Cheney. is how you spell Cheney. Cheney. OK. And top Bush advisors. Um, now that we get out of the. Um, yeah, it's side information, and there's gonna be a lot more. I of don't, that, I but... don't know your opinions on this, but uh, uh, no, it wasn't an inside job. It was. It wasn't. No, it was not an inside job. It That's was actually. Not what it's it was actually pretty easy to hijack a plane. Just most times, actually, yeah. every time before this, when you hijacked a plane, you were just like, "Take me to Cuba." You weren't gonna fly it into a uh, building or something. It wasn't exactly. gonna be a terrorist attack. It was like a hostage situation. Exactly. But not in this case. Which think, is sad. think like um, uh, what was his name? The uh, the, the big hijacker that everybody. Mm -hmm. What God, What was his name? The one that they never found. I, um, oh no! Oh, don't make me think about that. No, what was his name? Um, I don't know. DB Cooper. DB Cooper. God, there. DB, there we go. God. Okay, we got that out of the way. Can I move on? Yes, of course. This Sorry. Is, this is when the numbers start to not add up. Sorry, I derailed. So it. many claim. That because jet fuel can't melt steel beams and uh, the Twin Towers must have been brought down by controlled de demolition, demolition from bombs planted before the planes hit. This actually makes sense because jet fuel burns at 300 to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. I looked this up, by the way. But, okay. Steel beams melt at a temperature of... 25,000 to 28,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so I actually know about this because I, I, I watch a podcast. Uh, well, There's Your Problem did a uh, podcast episode about this, and they're an engineering disaster podcast. You should go exactly. watch them. Um, it, you should. Did you know that – yes, it's true. Jet fuel does not burn hot enough to melt steel, but paper does. Yeah, it, paper does. Paper does burn hot enough. So, so, here, so here's the main things. Here's the – this is what I know. When the Twin Towers were constructed, there were um, about three-story high things welded together. So when the, when the things hit, when the planes hit the towers, it basically destroyed how heavy of a load the towers could carry. And it, it just really disrupted how their structures were built. So when the fire, that the jet, it's true, jet fuel cannot melt steel beams, but paper can weaken, the, the fire can burn hot enough to weaken them. Basically, it just brought the building, it just melted it enough to where the heavy top of the building crashed into the lower stories. Which is why it took so long to fall. Exactly. Because and that's why it, that's why it didn't burn hot enough to instantly melt it, but it did burn hot enough to weaken it long enough to fall. Yes. That, this, is why when, why it fell. this is why when you watch the video of the towers falling, it looks like it collapses it like implodes. It fall. It falls top down. Exactly. Like I said, I'll I'll link, but, I'll link the well. There's your problem podcast episode in the description. If exactly. You to watch that. But the remote detonation does also make sense because some. And I I also had to look this up. Some remote bombs burn at well when they explode. They generate a heat of is what I should have said of 2,480 degrees Celsius, which is two times hotter in Fahrenheit than what steel beams need to melt. Okay, so the main But question... if this was the case, and I'm about to debunk this real quick, if this were the case, it would have fell, fell in a lot sooner if it was a remote detonation. Exactly. It would have been way quicker. Uh, and the main question I would have is why? Like, yeah, I, I think, mean, I think flying a plane into a building is more than enough to collapse it. What's what? What do you need the remote detonation for? It, I, exactly. 
Now, we're going to get into the side information because I want to explain some things. Go ahead. So, if you don't know how shock works, everybody, when a bomb detonates... It's basically... Okay, so shock, it's so the same reason that the CSS I, I, crew get turned into soup. Exactly. So, explosion shock waves can cause situations such as body displacement. Example, people being thrown through the air. Dismemberment... Internal memory. bleeding, thank you, and ruptured eardrums. Now, That's... if let's say there was a remote bomb, uh, people would have heard more than just the explosion of the plane. They would have heard a second shockwave sound that, if people were close enough, still could probably hear their ears ringing yeah. from like maybe three blocks away. God, we're going to get so many people angry. We're going to get a bunch of Confederates and 9-11 truthers mad at us. Listen, no, listen. It's not like it didn't happen. No, It no, no. did happen. I mean that like, a bunch of people are going to... It's gonna... just how it happened, you know what I mean? No, 9-11 truthers and the fact that uh, they believe that it yeah. was remote detonation, not a terrorist so, attack. That's what shock can do every time a bomb goes off. If you're close enough, it can do all of those things. Basically, it just displaces the air at a speed that can damage things around it. Exactly. Now, I want I wanted to go into fragmentation, but that's a little more complicated, so we're not going to get into that. Instead, I thought for a side tangent, we'd go into the different types of bombs. I'm... I'm, I'm sorry. So many watch lists after this. Like, if, yeah. If I already wasn't due to, I the only reason I did this is because I saw the one at the end and I kind of want to talk about uh, it. All right, nope, nope. This again, is, I want to bring section. it up again. This is your section. I'm not monetized. It doesn't matter. So compressed gas bombs, basically, that's just. Isn't that what gas a pipe bomb? Isn't that what a pipe bomb is? Yeah, that's what a pipe bomb is. Got it. Pretty much any bomb that deals with gas. So this is how you make like a... most of them, but. Like, very specific types of gas. So this is how you make a pipe bomb. Like, a dry ice bomb, for example. That's a thing. That's a thing. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, the dry ice bombs exist. Uh, okay. Which I, is actually pretty cool. I, I think about it. Dry ice is very interesting. It's a, it's, it, a, it, it, it's a solid that goes straight. It use, it's in sublimination, and it just goes straight into a gas. It's very interesting. Yeah. Like, when you, when you just pour cold water on it, it starts to melt and steam. Like, it starts to steam. It doesn't melt. It subliminates. It, it doesn't... Exactly. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, like, melt it, or, like... It doesn't turn into a liquid. It just goes straight to a gas. It goes instantly gas, which I think is pretty cool. It is very cool. Anyways, now, low explosives. This... Uh, examples of this would be... Okay, so examples of, like, what these types of bombs would use, they would use potassium nitrate instead. Rather than, like, gas or, like, dry ice, for example. Potassium nitrate, like that's... the last bomb is. KOH? Yeah. Ah, uh, my, my, my one year of chemistry is coming in handy. Rah! Well, so, they would use this in... I'm basically just going to go into what they would use. Okay, yeah. The low explosives would use potassium nitrate. It doesn't give me any, give me an exact um, Yield. It doesn't give me a, an example of like oh. what what bombs use this, so I'm not. We're not even gonna look it up. Yeah. Alright, so now high did, explosives. Don't, you don't need to be any more any more watch lists than you already are. High explosives deal with fragmentation. This is why I wanted to get into it because this is where fragmentation comes into play. Um, do you want me to give me a basic definition of fragmentation? If you want, yeah. If you want to give uh, me a basic, it's basically I'm just where it. when an explosive happens, it creates little shards of debris that just fly out. And uh, this is why, like, when a grenade goes off, it's more dangerous than just the area of the explosion. It, it tosses crap at you at a very fast rate. Exactly. And that's an example of a high explosive, a hand grenade. Like, that, that's where we're at right now. And it just gets crazier from here, believe it or not. Uh, I, I so we have ther thermobaric bombs. Oh, thermobaric, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thermobaric bombs. So basically all of your bombs that deal with, like, intense heat, but not nuclear, because we're not there yet. Oh. Like napalm, for example. I have an interesting thing about thermobaric bombs. Um, you can go for it. 
they suck all of the air out of an area, meaning that they're actually, I think most thermobarics are banned under the Geneva Convention, obviously because of the fire, but also oh, because obviously. They, they suck all the air out of certain areas, and this can cause uh, civilians to suffocate. Yeah. Alright, now we're on nuclear fusion. Ah, fission. the fun ones. Fission. Fission bombs. There's a difference between fission and fusion. Fusion? I don't know the... I, I, fission. Uh, fission is the one where nuclear they... Nuclear fission. Fission is the one where they split the atom fusions, where they fuse it. Uh, fusion exactly. is act- fusion is actually being developed into a new power source that scientists are which working is, on. which I mean, like super cool. That's it's like it's like a clean, non-clean energy source because when you think about it, all the nuclear waste that gets involved yes. with fusion, nuclear fusion. And... Fusion is twenty times more efficient than nuclear fission, and it also doesn't create the nasty byproducts that fission does. Which, by the way. Fission and fusion is what both the sun use. So we're like talking power of the sun. We are here, literally harnessing the power scale. of the sun. We are us- we are literally, literally but on a very tiny scale. Of course. Like very tiny scale. We're not uh, what Dr. Octopus from uh, Amazing Spider-Man 2. Yeah. So an example of like a nuclear fission bomb would be the one dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Uh, flashback to the fusion. Demon Core episode. Exactly. They weren't fu- they weren't fusion bombs because they weren't they didn't they didn't know you know you know what I mean they, they didn't, didn't know how to make fusion happen. Fusion but they a... knew what how fission worked. Split the atom. Exactly because that that's how they work. That's how those two first nuclear bombs work. They just, would split just go watch the, the atoms. Demon Core episode. You... Go watch the Demon Core episode. You'd understand. Nuclear fusion. Now this is what the Czar bomb used, for example. I thought it that would was, fuse the atoms. I thought no, that was, was a, no. It's a high. That's a it's hydrogen a high, bomb. I don't know an example of a fusion bomb. There is no fusion bombs. Fusion is a still a very know. new science. It is a. This is more new. If you know some, if you know about a fusion bomb, let us know in the comments. Yeah, let us know because I don't even know if one exists. But it it's basically a thermonuclear weapon. Yep. It, if we were to create one, it, that's what it would be like. Now, I don't know if you remember this, Evron, but we talked about a specific bomb for about 30 minutes, one episode. Oh, antimatter. Yep, we antimatter bombs. I have a good memory. It it is it is a entirely theoretical constructed. We're not talking about no, no 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 wait no no we're not talking about. We're not talking about it because because you went on a 30 minute rant this. and I I was very happy to listen, but we're not doing that again. You can go watch so that. Basically, episode if you if you, you want to recap, uh. Antimatter bombs are like way more efficient when it comes to destruction. And let's just say if we were to make one, Earth and the universe as we know it would just die. So theoretically, of course. Theoretically, of course. But yeah, uh, recap on the conspiracy theory. Um, people think that uh, instead of like you know getting hit by the towers and like you know that's how it happened is because of jet fuel. Then some people believe that it's not because of jet fuel; it's because of a remote detonation. Which, when you think about it, doesn't make any damn sense. Because a plane crashing into a building, regardless, is going to do something. It only makes sense if you believe that it was an inside job. You exactly. Have to it, believe... it wasn't an inside job. No, it wasn't. It, there was some incompetence on the side of the CIA and the FBI where they could have realized that it was going to happen beforehand, but that's not the same as like George Bush. Plot planting nanothermite in the twin towers. Yep. So uh, that's the recap of my conspiracy theory. But I have one more thing I want to talk about, and this is it ties in to when I'm writing my episode. All right. All right, Les. There you go. I if if those of you who do not know, um, I am getting ear surgery here soon i'm not telling you when because you don't need to know when all you need to know is is that i'm getting it this is why and i wanted and i wanted to go into depth of like how it how it's gonna work this is one reason that we're gonna have to scale back the production of episodes for a little bit for a little bit not not just a little bit not like the whole summer just like a little bit a little bit yeah so i want to go into like what they're gonna do to me, like how, like what's what's not, the don't say it like that. Don't say it like that. Do. Don't say it like that. Sounds like a Catholic church. No. Okay. Sorry. What they're gonna please reword that for me. What they are going to surgically do in his surgically ear. do 
Yep, there you go. Oh my god, I lost my information. Okay, oh, we no. shall got it back. I got Scuff. it, we're good. Scuff podcast, podcast ruined. So, essentially, medically what they're going to do is they're going to... Okay, hang on, I should probably go into the backstory of okay. my ear situation. I, so basically... Do you feel comfortable small, saying that? It's small, fine. Small, small, I'm just going to do it real quick. Small Rex, no ear tube because fell out right side never healed there you go that's all you need to know yeah i've had two other surgeries before this both didn't work and this is why this is the third one because we're hoping this one works and what they're going to do is they're going to make a cartilage patch i could go into the science mumbo jumbo about it but i'm going to give you a like flat definition of what they're going to do. It's basically skin. They're going to make a, a cartilage skin sandwich. So they're going to go skin, cartilage, skin, cartilage, skin, and then put it over the hole inside my ear. How they do this is that they can either A, they can do it through my ear, or B, they can cut open my ear from the backside and do it. An another thing that they may or may not have to do is what they what they told me is reconstruction of my ear bone and if you don't know what that is or how what that looks like um it's not great. it's 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 not great but it's the little thing right next to it's the little tiny tiny little thing next to the giant blue thing it's to the, the left is, like it's right the, next to it's it it's the little bone next to the drum of your ear basically the drum yeah it's what holds your drum in essentially yeah so I have a lot of hearing loss, like 30% lost hearing loss because of my right ear, but also at high frequencies, and that's where the ear bone comes into play because that's what the ear bone helps with. The ear bone essentially helps with your high pitch hearing, and I, I'm losing almost 50% of my high frequency hearing. I can actually and kind of relate here. Uh, mine wasn't like a birth thing. Mine was a head, exactly. Mine was head trauma. Ex <laughs> yeah, we're not getting into that because that's that's a different story for another time. Is, exactly. When we do an episode so, about American healthcare, we'll talk about it. Yeah. So essentially, they're going what they might do, and they won't know this until like they find out during surgery if they're going to do this or not. Because you can't, you can't just like put something in my ear and look at my ear bone because that's just not how that works. It's not, it's like, they can't just take an x-ray of my ear. Um, I have a question. Why not? Well, it's because your ear bones are your smallest bones in your body. And, it just and if they were to do, it just wouldn't, they, they just wouldn't be able to see it, period. Because okay. that makes sense. the x-ray would more focus on your head region your rather than your ear. Like your, rather than, like, your skull, you know? Got it, got it, got it. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. Them, they're just too small for the x-ray to pick up got it got it got it so how like i said the ear bone works because it helps you hear high frequencies and they believe that i have eroded partially some partial parts of my ear bone so they'll have to reconstruct it all and put an artificial one in so you're so you're uh is it made of metal or is it like silicon I, uh, I I assume silicone. I okay, because I was gonna say you. If, but I it might be metal. I'm not too sure. It might be like some sort of like light metal. I was gonna because say you're gonna have it to... has to be strong enough to last. But also not. But also not like flimsy enough. You, you know what I mean? But not wanna... like yeah. he heavy enough to like cause problems. Uh, yeah. So you're just gonna TSA will be a little more difficult. Exactly. So like I said. They will know if they'll do the ear bone part until, like, during surgery because, again, you can't just take an x-ray of your ear and see your ear bone. It's just not how it works. Yep. So that – but the good news is recovery time. It will take me about a week, so I won't be here for a week of the podcast. I will entrust everyone to do it. Oh, I do have to do it on my own? If you want to. Otherwise, uh... it's going to be delayed for a while. Uh, I might, I might, we'll see. Because I might, I'll try, I might, I might try week, to get a guest on to. Do because it. even after a week after, I'm pretty sure I still can't wear headphones or anything like that. Uh, if that's because the... after surgery, my ear ear will be really really tender. So the first like three days, I can't like I can barely listen to anything that's above like 
10 decibels. Jeez, are you, are you going to wear, like... Without uh, it, like, doing something. Are you going to wear noise muffler, mufflers? Uh, no, if they do cut behind my ear, um, what they'll do... that This is only if they cut behind my ear. If they go through the ear, I assume it won't be like that. But if they cut behind my ear, then I'll just have, like, a giant muffled cast over my ear. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Regardless, though, I'm going to need to... I'm going to need at least two weeks like ear hearing recovery wise before actually no i actually ha i actually can't listen to like really loud things until my follow up 4 weeks after so my voice is one example of a very loud thing exactly so yeah there might be a delay in the podcast i might try so, to get a guest yeah. to fill the role of rumbly for a couple episodes but which i know it's very difficult I will look in my community tab. I guess is the best thing I can but, say. But um, but yeah, that's uh, that's what's happening with me, and that's why I'll probably be gone for about one or two podcasts. But that's a just no. I'm not dead. Uh, yes. If Rumbly dies, you will know about it because I will probably just never post again. You'll you'll post a video being like yeah. So. You'd be po you'd post a very sad video, essentially. A very sad one, or, or a very like amusing one, because I'll need the therapy. Exactly. So yeah, that's what's happening with me, and yeah, that's I think that's all I wanted to say. All right. Um, if that's all. I hope you guys learned a lot about me talking about the inside of the year. And because. Bombs. And bombs because. That's what the 9-11 conspiracy kind of, like, led me into, and I was like, interesting. Yeah, that's, a, that's a pretty good segue, honestly. Yeah. Uh, I hope you learned a lot about uh, Confederate submarines and uh, absolutely hating slavery. Um, and 9-11 conspiracy and what happens on the inside of your ear. I'm not a doctor. I, yeah, I could market this as educational. All right. all right, but that's that's all I got. All right, um, yeah, that's it for t uh, this episode. Next episode, uh, assassination attempts of Fidel Castro. Yep, and an even better conspiracy theory. Trust me, the the next one's even better. I'm excited. All right, even more side tangents, even more things we can dive into. More of our serenading voices, you guys yeah. love. All right, I hope. Yeah, we hope. Okay. All right. See you guys next time. Bye. Bye.